Okay, so um, it is bevy 0.18. Guess I could pull that up on docs.rs now that the docs are built. Say 0.18, we are good and ready to go. Had the release video yesterday. Today, I want to go back to an example that we did a while ago. And I don't know what I'm gonna do. If we're gonna, if it's gonna work, I'm gonna do like a little <laughs> demo of the little thing that we have right here. Um, I don't know if this is even gonna work. I might cut this out later. But I want to do a compute shader landscape today. So we have this old demo. Um, I might put the code here. I might put the code in the Bevy examples repo. Um, but in the Rust Adventure org, we have this demo that does low poly terrain. This is done uh, entirely on the CPU. It has some async stuff going on uh, and so on and so forth. Um, but generating new chunks is kind of expensive. Uh, we did some async stuff because it costs a little bit. So we wanted to, you know, divvy that up. One way that we can greatly improve the performance of this kind of demo is by using a compute shader. And I think this PR hasn't actually merged yet. I thought it might have. No, the PR hasn't merged yet. So this PR uh, has a demo. We're gonna check that out. So I'm gonna use the GitHub CLI tools, GHPR checkout 22296. I think will work here. Um, and now that, as soon as I do that, I remember that I probably have this. Yeah, I already have this checked out. <laughs> so this will probably just run. Uh, cargo run example, compute mesh. Um, I have the debug features on for some reason. Let's turn those off. So we're gonna run this. Um, I've mostly already got it compiling. This is on main right now, but we are gonna work with 0 0.18, the new release. Um, and what's gonna happen here is basically this is a compute shader that is kicked off by an instantiating kind of like an empty mesh in the regular world, the main world. And that gets pushed into an extracted uh, into the render world for Bevy and slapped into the mesh allocator, which holds a bunch of slabs that hold a bunch of meshes uh, and thus kind of fits into all of the other pieces of Bevy's rendering pipelines uh, without too much effort. So what that allows us to do is basically instantiate this mesh, upload it once uh, to the render world, to the GPU, and then take a compute shader and actually use a compute shader to do the generation for those meshes. So in this case, there are two cubes, a red cube and a blue cube, as we can see now here with it running on my local machine. And we're basically gonna take this example that I built uh, and turn that into some landscape generation. Um, so there are a couple changes from ancient times <laughs> in this directory. Let me get, just make a new directory here. We'll do bevy new, I don't want to call it low poly terrain because we're going on the GPU now. We shouldn't, we shouldn't have to do low poly anymore. So we'll do bevy new. I'm going to call this uh, compute landscape. I'm going to end up with like three different landscape demos by the end of the year. We're going to have this low poly one on the CPU. We're going to have a compute shader one. And then we're probably also going to have a mesh shader one. So let's just call this compute landscape for now. Uh, we are going to have to make a change here because I think um, my guess is that nobody made the PR to update this to 0.18. Uh, this is a minimal demo, so it doesn't really matter. Right, like this is just uh, main function, app exit, app new, default plugins, that kind of stuff. So we're gonna have um, some empty space to work with here. And there are basically two files. We're gonna get a, we don't have an assets directory. I thought that came with an assets directory. Uh, I'm just gonna call this like landscape.wgsl. It's gonna be our compute shader. And then for our main, we're just gonna take in the code that's already in there. We will cover it a little bit. Uh, don't worry too much. But the example already has a bunch of comments, so uh, I'm probably not going to go over every little, little detail. And I'm just going to kick off a compile here and then pull up the code, and we're going to talk about it a little bit while that does a, an off-screen compile. So we have two uh, files here. We have a main.rs and a landscape.wgsl. Obviously, this is going to break, so we need to change this to be landscape.wgsl. We have here default plugins, compute shader, mesh generator plugin, which is our plugin. It's not special, it's something we are going to make. And then we've got this extract component plugin, which is generate mesh. So generate mesh is a component that goes onto an entity in the main world to indicate that this should be a mesh that gets uh, modified by this compute shader. Our plugin here accesses some render world stuff, adds some systems, uh, and then finishes it off. So what we're doing here is in our plugin, getting the render world, initializing some chunks to process resource, 
in render startup, we initialize our compute shader pipeline and we add that compute shader pipeline to the render graph. So Bevy has a render graph. Uh, you can define like things that you should run before uh, in that graph and, and some other stuff like that. We have a system called prepare chunks that runs in render. And then we finish off here by grabbing the mesh allocator resource and saying that we are actually going to use this as data that we are going to pass to this compute shader as a storage buffer. So this mesh allocator is really interesting, actually. We're not really going to cover it in detail, uh, but basically what happens here is that there is a bunch of slabs of memory, uh, and whenever a mesh needs to go somewhere for storage, uh, it goes into one of these slabs or a new slab. So what that means is that when we are in the render world, we want to go look up our mesh to use in our compute shader, we have to go ask the mesh allocator for the mesh that we're looking for or the slab that we're looking for actually. And then the mesh that we're looking for is going to be somewhere in that slab. You can think of this basically as like a VEC of bytes or something like that. And at some offset, our mesh starts and that's all of our vertex data. And we have another buffer for index data that we also ask the mesh allocator for. And to be able to take those buffers and throw them into the actual compute shader, we're going to use buffer usages storage. So our generate mesh is going to have a handle to the mesh that we really care about, the one that we want to generate. Uh, and then we've got a setup function and our render world systems down here. Our setup function is fairly straightforward. Um, I don't know that I'm going to keep these comments around. I wrote them all. You can go check them out in the example uh, that I also wrote. So what we're doing here basically is creating a new mesh with at least enough space for the thing that we want to uh, render out from our compute shader or like create from our compute shader. I think in our case, actually what I'm going to do, thinking about this, is I'm probably gonna create a plane here when we get around to the landscape. And I'm going to create this as a plane, make it render world only, and then use the compute shader to modify the ver vertex height based on some noise algorithm that we choose. Uh, in this case, in the like, cube case, we are basically just saying for attribute position, which is X, Y, Z, there are going to be three F32s. For attribute normal, there's another three F32s. For UVs, there's two more F32s. And then we also need these indices, in which case we allocate 50 indices. Um, we don't need to use all of the indices. We don't need to use all of the ve uh, vertex space. Um, but basically what happens here is that we will end up with one giant slab in the mesh allocator that has starting at the very beginning of our mesh. So at whatever offset that is, it's going to be vertex number one, X, Y, Z, attribute normal for uh, vertex number one, X, Y, Z, um, UV, X, Y. And here's our uh, current program actually running. So we, we know that it's working, which is great. Um, we can also look at this in render doc, which is super interesting. Uh, but I won't do that today because I'm actually on my Mac. <laughs> we could do that in Xcode, but uh, I don't feel like opening Xcode right now. So um, the other thing that we do to this mesh is we are setting render asset usages to render world because we don't need it in the main world. There's going to be some terrain. This is meant as kind of like a easy way to get a mesh into Bevy's render pipeline and do some really custom stuff with it. Um, so we create our mesh here in the main world. We are effectively uploading that. We're adding it to the mesh assets that goes into the render world and the main world just kind of forgets about it, but keeps the mesh handle around. Uh, so TLDR, this is the amount of data that we have available to write, and this needs to be bigger. It needs to be bigger or exactly equal to what we're actually going to write. Um, we aren't allowed to run over space. We're not allowed to expand the buffer while we're in the compute shader. The only way to change the buffer lengths is to create a new buffer. So this really needs to be at least at what you're going to write or more. Now that said, if you did something like <laughs> make this way too big and you could fit three things in here, you could do three, you know, meshes. Uh, so we've got our component here, generate mesh, which takes that handle that we just created. And um, we've got mesh 3D, mesh material 3D transform. If you're watching this video, you probably have seen these before. This is the standard PBR material. Um, the indication that we are using a like mesh that should render with a 3D camera, uh, as opposed to like meshes could be 2D meshes, right? They could render in with a 2D camera, which would be a mesh 2D. Uh, and this is placed somewhere in the world. And this is how we're going to end up doing our chunking. 
uh, for landscapes. We are only going to do one level of detail today. I'm not going to implement a whole LOD system. I'm not going to implement, um, while I'm blanking on the name, but the there's a thing that happens where if you do LODs with landscapes and chunks, that the edges between two different LODs are different vertex counts. Uh, and those seems kind of like need to match up. Uh, but we're not going to handle that today. We're going to do one level of detail. We're just going to get this compute shader done, uh, maybe throw an atmosphere on it, something like that. So in this case, uh, it's also interesting to note that we can render this in multiple places. Um, this is generating the mesh, passing the handle into the mesh 3D, but we can also just like reuse that handle somewhere else. So like when we generate this mesh or mutate that mesh data, it is actually the same kind of mesh that we have anywhere else. So if you clone that handle, which we aren't going to need to do, so I'm going to delete that. Uh, we also aren't going to need this circle. This circle doesn't matter to us. We don't need a base. We're going to have a bunch of uh, landscapes, landscape chunks, right? Uh, point light can stay for now. I think this ends up changing to directional light uh, and probably some atmosphere stuff, but we'll leave it for a second. Uh, we've got add, add compute render graph node. What this is basically saying is that we have a, uh, we have the render graph, right? Bevy's render graph. And there are labels for what nodes exist. We add our label. So this is the compute node label, which if we click on, we go back up. This is the label. It derives render label, some other really basic stuff, uh, you know, debug, partially clone. And it's just a marker struct, basically. Um, and here's our compute node. So also very simple. Um, nothing really going on here that's that's super interesting in that sense. 